Amen, amen, amen. We're going to move on through the service right now. I'm going to get ready and do the preaching. I declare, as I was sitting last night trying to get the rest of the sermon together, I said to myself, mm, maybe I should have had Brother Marvin preach this week, because this week I'm exhausted. Last, last Sunday I was traveling. Maybe I could have made later arrangements. But this week I was like, Lord, I'm so tired. I've learned so much. I, I'm too tired to finish putting this together. And he said, well, look, you, you got to learn from the situation. You got a few more months before you have to figure out what you need to do next time. So Brother Mar Myron, I called you Marvin. I apologize. Brother Myron, we will uh, check it out and see which works best for all of us as we go on through this situation. My scripture this morning comes from Isaiah chapter 40. And I will be reading verses 10 and 11. And it reads, See, the Lord God comes with might, and his arms rule for him. His reward is with him, and his recompense before him. He will feed his, feed his flock like a shepherd, and he will gather the lambs in his arms, and carry them in his bosom, and gently lead them, and gently lead the mother sheep. Let me read that one more time. I stumbled too many times for my comfort. It says, see the Lord comes with might and his arms rule for him. His reward is with him and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother sheep. And my topic this morning is, can you say comfort? Can you say comfort? Come on, let's pray. Good and gracious God, we just thank you for this opportunity yet once again to sit before your throne, sit before your, your feet and to simply listen to what thus saith the Lord. Lord God, I ask that, that any um, mistakes, any, any shortcomings, any things that are, are present in this sermon because of my uh, humanity, Lord God, that you would allow people to look past them and truly hear what thus saith the Lord. Lord God, we ask that you would come right now, open our hearts, our minds, our ears, so that we would get what thus saith the Lord, and that we would find a good way to be able to apply the word of God as it is, as it is presented to us this day. Lord God, we thank you once again, and we say amen and amen. <clears throat> these, these particular verses in in Isaiah, these 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 verses that I'll be doing <coughs> deal with a time after after the Israelites have been away in in captivity and after they've spent some time walking through the wilderness trying to get back to their beloved promised land. It's it comes at a at a time and place in their life where they feel like they've been traveling through the wilderness. Now it, it may be, I mean they didn't have a pandemic situation like we've got going right now, but it may be that they kind of felt like we do right now. Some of us kind of feel like you know I'm I'm out here and I, I'm not where I want to be. I'm I'm out here and I'm feeling isolated and not very close to anyone. I'm, I'm out here and, and I, I don't have the, the safety in numbers that I always wanted. I'm out here and I feel like God is kind of far away from me. I'm out here and, and I, I, I can't spend the time with my loved ones and my friends like I used to. I'm, I'm out here and I just feel like I'm stumbling around trying to see what comes next, where I need to go next, how I can get through this next situation. And so as the Israelites were out, they felt like they were in a land of, of wilderness. And you know, when you get into wilderness and it can be a difficult situation, there are things that pop up in the wilderness that keep us from feeling like we're safe. It's things that happen in the wilderness that keep us from feeling like everything's going to be all right. And so what Isaiah wanted to say to the people is he wanted to give them just a word of comfort. He wanted to let them know that God had not forsaken nor forgotten any of them, but that the same God who had brought them through the Red Sea. The same God who had allowed them to get, <clears throat> excuse me, to the promised land, the same God who had 
been with them in their wanderings was the same God that was going to continue to come and to see about them. See, the, the beauty of these particular verses is that Isaiah was trying to remind people of the two commandments that God had already given. The first commandment that God said was that we should love the Lord our God before all others. See, we've got to remember that we've got to put God first. We've got to remember God's place in our life. We've got to remember what's going on with God. We We've got to know always that it is God who is by our side, God who goes before us, God who comes after us, God who's on either side of us, God who lifts us up and God who covers us. Isaiah wanted to remind the people, look, you might be in a wilderness situation, but God is always right there. But there was something else that he wanted to remind them of. He wanted to remind the people the people about God's justice. And it was God's justice that was going to see them through. It was God, God's justice that was going to make things come out right on their behalf. It was God's justice that wasn't going to just leave them the way they felt. See, sometimes when we're going through situations in life, you feel like maybe God has left you for a time. You feel like things aren't going the way you want them to. You feel like I have to keep going through this situation and I'm all by myself. You feel like yeah, I don't have any friends and family that have been around to check and see what's going on. You feel like I've, I've lost too many people during this pandemic. You feel like I don't know if I can handle this much longer. You feel like, well, if I just keep wearing the mask, I should be safe and can go where I want. You feel like, well, it's all right, because maybe I heard the neighbor got um, COVID, but, but they weren't too bad. I'll, I'll just take my chances and see what happens. See, when you get into a wilderness mindset, you start acting like things are, things are, 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 are different than they really are. And you don't always look at the situation and evaluate it the way you would normally. And so what Isaiah wanted to do was to remind the Israelites, look, God has not left you during this moment. God has not left you at this time. Yes, you might be in a wilderness. Yes, you might feel like you're far from home, but that's all right because God is going to turn it around and things are going to come to pass the way they should. And so when we get to Isaiah chapter 40, it begins by talking about God's comfort. It begins by letting us know that there is a tenderness in the God that we serve. There is a, a tenderness about him that allows God to not forget about his people, but that he comes always and, and scoops us up with love and makes sure that everything's all right. And so what uh, Isaiah wanted to remind the people of is that you can take comfort in that fact. Well, when you start thinking about comfort, comfort is a, a thing that when it comes along, it, it just kind of makes you feel better. You know, we talk about eating comfort foods because when you eat them, they're nice and they're hot and they feel you on the inside. And it's like a warm feeling on the inside and it kind of permeates out. You know, when you start eating comfort foods and you have things that have gone in the oven and you've eaten a, a nice pot of soup that's, you know, possibly been in the the slow cooker all day, you, you start getting something that reminds you of a time that was simpler, reminds you of a time that was more wholesome, reminds you of a time when things were okay, reminds you of a time when things were a lot better, reminds you of something that's familiar, something that's comforting, something that makes you feel like, yes, I can do this thing. I can get through this thing. I don't have to feel like I'm in the wilderness by myself. I don't have to feel like I'm socially isolated in my basement by myself. I don't have to feel like my friends and family Family. I can only see him sporadically when it seems like it's safe. But when you start thinking about God being a God of comfort, it lets you to know that you're not ever by yourself, even when it gets difficult, even when it feels like things aren't right, even when it gets to a place where you feel like I'm just not sure how to keep making it. These words are to remind us that God is a God who is in the blessing business and has not left nor will he leave, but will always provide a way of comfort for us, even when we're having uh, wilderness situations. And so as we get specifically and hone in on these two verses right here, it starts talking about the powerful transformation that takes place in a wilderness situation. When you start looking at a situation and realizing not only is it uncomfortable, not only is it not something that I want to be in the midst of, not only is it a place where I don't want to be, but I'm going to find some comfort. I'm going to find the Lord. I'm going to find the uh, the, the presence of, of God. I'm going to find the blessing that has been left here for me. I'm going to find a way to stop looking at it and negatively, and I'm going to find what God has for me in 
the midst of it. And so when we get there, we start looking at the power that's in the wilderness of the situation. Because once we get through and inside of that wilderness, we start looking saying, well, Lord, I don't know. I don't know. Lord, I'm looking for you and I can't find you. I'm, I'm seeking you and I don't know how to see where you are. I'm, I'm looking high and I'm looking low. You ever been looking for something in the house and the first thing you pick up and you don't see it and you turn another way and you start looking and you go down the hall a bit and start and you just start seeking and searching because you know that it's in there. Well, we've got to be the same way sometimes when we're looking for the presence of God in our life. Sometimes when we're looking for um, just a touch of the Holy Spirit, we've got to go looking for it, looking to see where we last left it because sometimes we haven't prayed about it in a while. Sometimes we haven't opened up our Bibles to read about it in a while. Sometimes we haven't sat in, in quiet contemplation and waited for it to show up. And sometimes you've got to go looking for it to see, well, where is it now? Where have I put it? Where, where did I last lay it? And when you start looking, you always seem to find what it is that you're looking for. And so when we start looking, it tells us right here, it says God is going to come. And when God comes, he's coming with comfort. He's coming with a healing bed, a healing balm. He's coming. He's coming with both his might because he's strong and mighty, but also he's coming gently because he comes with mercy. He's coming with all that we need, the tough and the tender to take us through this next situation. See, the God that Isaiah is talking about isn't some sort of abstract type of something out in the outer atmosphere, something in the hemisphere, just something in the back of his mind. No, Isaiah was talking about a physical coming. He really meant like, y'all are going to see God coming. Y'all are going to feel God coming. Y'all are going to sense that that God truly has come and healed you, come and comforted you, come and relieved you and lifted you and taken you from out of this place to the place where you need to be. And so when we get to verse 10, it says, the Lord comes with might and his arms rule for him. Meaning that the Lord comes in. See, the Lord doesn't come in all meek and mild. The Lord, when he comes into our lives, when he comes to rescue us, God comes in with power. He comes in with authority. God comes in with all the answers. God comes in knowing how it's going to work out. God comes in and is not worried about the repercussions. God comes in and he knows, look, I'm going to take care of it. I don't have to sidestep it. I don't have to pretend. I don't have to try to find a way to fit in. God just comes in boldly into our situation. But it tells us as we read further in verse 10, it says his reward is with him. His recompense before him, meaning that the blessing that God is coming to give, the salvation that God is coming to bring, the deliverance that God is coming to bestow, he brings it boldly before us as he comes seeking us, as he comes to lift us, as he comes to save us, as he comes to restore us. God comes, and I, I know I should stop saying God and then using the word he, because that's old school and new school. They want you to just talk about the godness of God and not put agenda to God. But if you will excuse me, because sometimes I need to be reminded that God is the father of everything. God is the creator of everything. And so when God comes, he comes boldly taking care of us. He comes with everything that I might need. He comes with everything that you need and make sure that it's all taken care of, comes with all power and might in his hands and says, ah, my beloved, I've come to bring you comfort this morning. I've come to remind you, you are not alone. I've come to let you know that this wilderness is soon to pass. And when he comes, it says he will feed his flock like a shepherd, meaning that when God shows up in our lives, it's not just like it's a little bit of something, but God attends to each one of our needs. Make sure that whatever it is we've been standing in need of, whatever it is that we've been wanting, God finds a way to make sure that we have it. And yet still, and still he gathers us like lambs in his arms, holding us close, letting us know, yes, I've come to, to take care of everything that's come to, to knock you off base, everything that's come to make you feel uncomfortable, everything that's happening that makes you feel discombobulated as it was, as it is. But God comes with authority and yet is still always very gentle with each one of us. God doesn't just give us what we deserve. God doesn't just give us what we need, but God comes with plenty of love, with plenty of protection, with plenty of, 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 of comfort, making sure that not only do we get what we need, but we are delivered it in a way that is easy for us to swallow. He doesn't just throw it at us, but gently just lifts us in his arms and, and places us with 
where the blessing is so that we know that it's there right for us. And it says, he will carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother sheep. Well, you know, the mother sheep looks after all her baby sheep, makes sure that they all get where they need, kind of come and corrals them around as it were, getting to where they need to be. And so when he gathers us closely, making sure that not near one of us is left, that not near one of us isn't touched, that not near one of us doesn't receive the blessing. See, what we've got to remember is that when God comes into the midst of our situation, whatever that might be, it could be that you're struggling with something financial. It could be that you're struggling with something emotional. It could be that you're struggling with something health related. It could be that you've got something mentally that's been bothering you and you need to seek a little counsel about it. I don't know what your particular situation might be this morning, but I do know what the answer is. See, the answer is the same today as it was yesterday, as it will be tomorrow. The answer is always going to be God. And just remembering that where God is, there is comfort. Where God is, there is love. Where God is, there is peace. Where God is, there is contentment. Where God is, there is some joy. Where God is, there is some deliverance. Where God is, there's some hope. Where God is, there's some happiness. Where God is, there's some 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 looking forward into the future. There's there's some peace that's going to be. It's going to be some things happening. And when God does them in our lives, as although God moves boldly to come into the midst of our lives, God still treats us gently, still treats us lovingly, still treats us so that we'll know that we're going to be all right, that we don't have to be scared by what's happening. Happening. We don't have to be dismayed by what comes next. We don't have to sit and wonder how we made it over. We'll just know we made it over somehow because God held us close, rocked us in the bosom of his arm and made sure that everything was all right. And when we look back on our yesterdays, when we look back on our last years, when we look back over the course of our lives, we can look back and say, oh, but look how good God has been loving me. Look at how good God has been keeping me. God has been comforting me for a long time. And sometimes we need more comfort at other sometimes than we do at other times. But if we would just lean into the presence of of God, if we would just lean into that relationship we've been holding on to, if we would just lean more into that word we've been reading about, if we would just lean more into those prayers we've been given, if we would just lean more into God, God will continue to provide that comfort, pretend, continue to provide that peace and that protection. Y'all got to notice, I kind of preach the same thing almost every single week. I tell y'all how much God loves you. I tell you how much God provides for you. I tell you how much God will make sure that your life is peaceful and everything goes well. Well, why do I preach the same thing week after week, month after month? Because sometimes we need to still be reminded that God sits on the throne, that God is in charge of all of this, and it is not we ourselves. And yet, God has been protecting us. God has been making a way even when we didn't know a way needed to be made. God has been looking at our situation, seeing what's going on around us and said, these are my beloved people. I will provide for them. I will comfort them. I don't want them to be upset and I don't want them to be discouraged. I want them to know that I love them with a perfect love, with the best love that I've got, the greatest love that there is. That's the love that God has for us. And that's what God does when God constantly, tenderly beseeches us so that God can simply just offer his presence, his peace his protection, and some comfort. That's all I got for you this morning. Just to remind you that God is with us providing some comfort. And I hope that you hold on to it this week. I hope that it reminds you that even if you look in the Old Testament, you can find a God of provision. You can provide, find a God of love, a God of protection, a God who is right there. You don't have to feel by yourself. You don't have to feel isolated. You don't have to feel overwhelmed. You can sit right in the midst of where you are right now and be excited about how good God has been in your life. You can be right where you are right now and you can just know God is with 
with me where I am. You can be even if you're in a room by yourself like I am. Yeah, I'm by myself physically, but spiritually, God is right here with me. And then God allows me to look out and to see your faces and to know even as I'm in here by myself, I'm not alone because I've got a whole church that I love. I've got a whole church that loves me. And we've been praying for one another and we've been working together, trying to make sure we come through this thing so that when we get through on the other side, We'll be able to welcome somebody else and say, come on into the house. This is the house that God built. Come on into the house. This is the place where God resides. Come on into the house. We've been waiting for you to show up. Come on into the house because God is quite pleased with you. And so are we. Come on into the house because we love you. And we want to be a part of your life. We want to be a part of your blessing. That is what I hope that we carry on. That is what we've got to uh, build within us. Just a way to keep holding on till we can come on into the house, be in the presence of the Lord and just love on one another till we get there. Is that all right? Is that all right? Come on, somebody. Is that all right? That's what God wants. God wants a people who say, you know what, God, I don't just love you, but I love them too. They are part of you, so they must be a part of me. That's what God is looking for. Milford, we've got to be the body of Christ that all other people go, I want to get over there. I want to see what's happening there. I feel like something is over there. Look at all them people. They're so nice. Look at all them people. They seem like they're so pleasant. Look, every time you see them, they wave and go, hey, how you doing? Come on by. That's what we're going to be. We're going to be God's house. We're going to be God's people in God's house. And folk going to start walking over from across the street. Folk going to start stopping on the side of Milford Mill saying, I'm going to just check out what's going on. We're going to show up one day and the parking lot's going to be so full and somebody's going to want to say, well, I can't even get a spot. And then they're going to remember, wait, I remember when we had more spots than we knew what to do with. That's all right. I'll park over here on this little piece of grass. Let me go on in and extend a warm welcome to my brethren. Let me go on in and see who's come to visit with us today. Let me go on in and see who's going to be part of our family today. See, we've got to prepare for it right now. We've got to live into it right now. We've got to get to a point where we say, I'm so excited about what God is doing. I'm so excited about what's about to happen. I don't know who the people are. I don't know where they're coming from. I don't even know how many it is, but I'm so excited to know that when God shows up, so will they. And when they show up, I'm going to give them a good hug because by then the pandemic will be over. And it won't just be me hugging them, but you'll be hugging them too saying, we've been waiting for you. God, we are so excited that you're here. Look, make sure you get involved. We've got some good ministries here. Oh, do you need anything? We want to make sure we take good care of you but don't forget don't forget we're gonna always have our our prayer meeting on second tuesday of the month don't forget we got a book club that's gonna start back don't forget we've got we got the food ministry if you want to work with us on it don't oh we've got a prayer ministry you can just be a part of that. Whatever you want to do, we're going to have it there for you. And when they leave out that building, they'll be itching, waiting for the next time to show up because they'll realize that there's God in that place because God is inside of each and every one of us. Now I've gone clean off topic, but I want you to know that the comfort I spoke about, that comfort allows me to be able to say, to look at you and speak into the future and say, God is coming and God is soon to show up. And when God does, God is waiting for his people. That's you and me to be right, ready, willing, and able. And I'm looking saying, are you ready? Are you willing? And are you able? Because we got some work to do. We've got some people to love. We've got some folks to embrace. We've got to help them get past what they've dealt with. And the only way we can do that is get past what we've dealt with. So we're going to grow together now. So we'll be all right and ready for them when they come. I hope that's all right with you because that's how I'm feeling this morning. I'm feeling like our blessing is on the way. I've talked about it before, but I'm feeling like it's right at the precipice now and it is soon to show up. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. You've got to be excited with me on this. You've got to live into this moment with me. These aren't just simple little words I say, but this is a something to know that God has given us a time like this so that we can prepare ourselves for the next blessing that's about to come. We can prepare ourselves for how things are going to happen in the future. We can prepare ourselves right now so that when they come into the doom, when they show up on the parking lot, 
they'll almost go, wait a minute, they're too friendly here. They were trying to hug me before I got the door open. Yes, that's how we want to be. We want people to know, look, we right here and we love you. We want you to be a part of us. No, we ain't got nothing for you but the blood of God. We ain't the blood of Jesus, but it's right here and you can get it. Come on into the, let me, can I carry your bag for you as you come in? Now don't walk too far ahead of them and they feel like you're stealing, but just help them with what they need. We got to sometime usher some folk into the building. Miss Norma knows what I'm talking about. You got to welcome them with a good smile. Make them feel loved and wanted when they get there. That's what God is asking for. He's saying, let me provide you comfort. So you'll feel compelled. You'll be relaxed. You'll understand how to do this next phase. You'll know what's going to happen. You'll be so comfortable resting in the blessings of God that you'll forget how it felt when you were concerned. And you'll be able to pass that feeling on to somebody else. Come on, somebody ought to be willing to say amen. Somebody ought to be thinking about the future going, yes, God, yes, God, I, I hear it, I hear it, I see it. I embrace it and I want it. 